All right, that's the last topic from me today. Um, uh, this is about uh, interfaces for user space to do, run, to do PM, and basically runtime PM. And uh, so uh, the story goes like this. We have, so first of all, user space need, needs to tell us what to do sometimes and uh, whether we can power manage some devices, for example, what the wake up settings should be. Uh, what, and some other, whether we can ter remove power from a given device entirely or not, that sometimes is not desirable, and um, other things like that. So currently we have a few SysFS attributes for that. Uh, the first one is SysDevices power control, and then that attribute tells the kernel whether or not the device can be power managed at runtime. If it is set to on, then the device is supposed to be on. I mean, it can't be put into any low power state. If that attribute is set to auto, then the kernel has control over the device and it can do to it whatever it wants. I mean, it may put it into low power state. If that's implemented in a driver and bus type and whatever needs to implement it, and uh, or it can just leave it on depending on the needs. The next thing is uh, if uh, the device is put into low power state, it has to go back to the full power state when it's needed again. And there, there's some latency related to that. And sometimes uh, we <coughs> want user space to tell us what that latency, what, what's the acceptable uh, tolerable level of latency related to PM operations. And we use device PMQS for that. There's, there are attributes. Uh, there is one attribute, actually, uh, for uh, resume latency. And um, OK, I, I, I'll get back to that in a while. Uh, next, there is. Um, uh, wake up settings. So we may want the device to be uh, able to generate wake up signals, which is called remote wake up for um, after USB. USB has a concept of remote wake up, and we just adopted that terminology generally. So we may want to set the device to generate wake up signals or not, again, depending on the needs. And uh, so for system wake up, we have uh, that. Thing. And if that is visible, it means that, or enabled, sorry, if that is enabled, uh, if that is enabled, the, the, the device can wake up the system from system, system global uh, energy saving states. And if that is disabled, then of course the device is not supposed to signal wake up from those states. And um, for runtime PM, we have a special uh, PMQoS setting for uh, for uh, wake up for remote for remote wake up, but that that is not present for all devices and uh, and it, it's not used consistently. Uh, so again, I'll get back to that. We have debug attributes that allow us to, to see how many times the device have been suspended and so on. Uh, and um, yeah, and there are some problems with those things already that are I, I talked about. So first of all, uh, the, the resume latency tolerance attribute, which is implemented through PMQS, is done a little inefficiently. It should be. Uh, it, it needs to be reworked, reworked at, at this point because it has a notification mechanism that is not necessary and, it, and, and that causes complications in, in the implementation or introduces complications. So it should be modified, in my opinion, but it's useful. And uh, wake up it has the problem that it is inconsistent. I mean, uh, we we have a different infrastructure for system wake up and different for remote wake up and that causes confusion obviously so the plan is kind of to integrate them together so that we have only one setting which ideally would be this one but 
we, I would like to add one more level. I mean, this can be either disabled or, or enabled right now. And I, I talked to Alan about this and we thought we could add one more level which would be off. And if off is set that, if that is set to off, that would mean that uh, the device is not supposed to generate wake up signals at all, even at runtime. Disabled will mean that systems, system wake up signals are disabled, but it can generate runtime wake up, remote wake up signals at runtime. Yeah, it does that right now, yes. So that's going to be backwards compatible with. And then we can get rid of this thing entirely. So. Uh, and that also will play better with the Android the auto sleep thing that needs, that requires us to, 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 tell, to tell it where, when, the, when there was a wake up signal. And so yeah, so there is something that I would like to change. And um, perhaps some of the debug attributes should be, uh, should be enabled with, uh, without the special config options because they are only compiled in if, if, if uh, advanced, uh, advanced debug option is set. I think that we could just move some of them from under the hash if def or perhaps all of them even so that they are available uh, ever, uh, always, the, the, you know, always built. Um, and now there are, there are two questions I wanted to ask. So the first question is if people have any ideas about describing dependencies between devices uh, so that user space can look at those and see how devices are dependent from each other power management wise. For example, which devices are in the same power domain or something like that, because user space have no, has no idea right now about those things. And uh, other, the, the second question is, do we need more settings to control those things? Which I, I'm not sure about, so, so they are open. I don't have any ideas at the moment. a sysbus power you know area where we could go and we could see like here's resource zero here's resource one and then you could cd into that and you could see all the devices on resource zero and then also each each power resource you could put its power state in there so you would be able to at the topmost level detect you know what's the so power for state a of that resource cpi power resources we have that in what for pc uh, icpi power resources for ACPI, yeah but it'd be nice to get it for, for everything that's a power resource, you know, just a tree. So, yes, for... Plus, isn't on the ACPI power resource one, isn't it more like you have to find the actual physical node and then go back? No, 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 you, you just... ACPI power resources are... Um, operate on ACPI device objects, let's just say. And that's all of that is in the in the ACPI uh, branch of the device tree. So all of that information is available right now for ACPI power resources. But, but that if is I, if I go into the ACPI area, I mean, is it easy for me to find the a tree that shows me the power resource, or am I going to have to go through each node in the ACPI bus and find out what is its power tree and then so you need reconstruct to find you need to find the nodes that represent power resources because they may be in different places uh, in the in the device name in the ACPI namespace so you you need to find those things well, but they are it's easy to find because they have um, specific attributes under them 
Right, but that's my point is, is it would be nice is if it was actually a tree that you could just go look at rather than having to pick the information out of different device notes. The problem with that is they don't, they don't really are a tree. It's like power resource may appear, appear in, in, a, in, in many different places in a device namespace in ACPI, and they don't, they are not a tree-like structure. Yeah, I just think that that would be nicer from a user perspective to be able to, to uh, if you're only interested in power, which I am, then you know <laughs> I don't want to go and look through every single node on the device. I just want to see a map. You know, I want to see a map of the power resources of the system and who's on it and who's making the power resource be high or low or whatever. I want to so see for a CPI, you can. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it is. It, actually, that information is available through SysFS. So, uh, so for ACPI, as I said, you can get all of that information from the existing well, SysFS. I know, I know you can get it, but it's not displayed to my liking. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, obviously I can put this, I can, you know, modify PowerTop and put this information in PowerTop. It's just that then, you know, uh, it would just be nicer if it was exported already so that nobody needed to use PowerTop if they wanted to see this in a sort of a more digestible form. They are not. That's the problem. They are not hierarchical. So you can just put, you can just make up a tree. But it doesn't make sense because it doesn't represent any existing structure. Well, there. It's, it's, it's hierarchical, isn't it? But it's not hierarchical in the natural namespace. That's yeah. right. It's 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 its own hierarchy. And we can't. Yeah. So we, we could, in principle, we could create a, a SysFS uh, branch or directory with power resources or things like that, and then point to devices from there. Is that what you are that, talking that's about? That's what I'm asking. Like thermal. So I, I'm wondering if there's any way to, to, first of all, to come up with a, with a structure that could be 
general, generally applicable to, uh, to all systems that we, we deal with, like ACPI and non-ACPI, and like where there are power domains and other things like that. Is there any way we can uh, cover all of them in, in a reasonable way? The clock dependencies also are, I'm not sure if they are, they are, you can figure them out from user space. I mean, the kernel knows how the clocks are dependent on each other, but the, does user space have any way to figure this out right now? Yeah, we have in ICPI we have a we have a kind of complicated structure for that because the, the power resources are uh, represented by device objects and they uh, we have links to those from device objects in ACPI in in the ACPI branch and but those are device object ACPI device objects so if, if you have a physical device you need to find an ACPI node which is associated with it and from there you can you have links to uh, to power resources that this node depends on and so it is it is kind of complicated like, still but it's the same thing. You're, yeah you're not yeah you don't you don't you don't you don't so through through resource, through, through resource yes that's resource correct yeah yeah Yes, yeah. So I, I wonder if that's viable and... Something like Libu something like Libudev, right? So, some of that isn't yeah, isn't some of that is Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but well, in SCPI, we we don't really look at the hardware. We look at uh, what what the firmware tells us, actually, right? So that's not the hardware directly. It's it's kind of derivative, but.
Yeah, yeah, but then, yeah. So the problem with that, that is that we, it's kind of like this. ACPI hides the, uh, the structure from us behind power resources. Uh, I mean, it represents things as power resources which can you turn uh, on and off, basically such things. And it hides everything from us behind those things. And yeah, we don't see power domains. We only see those. So if we were to use power domains, we, we would have to figure out what the domains are first and then <laughs> use them and then <laughs> go back and... Yeah, they are, yes. Yes, they are, but they hide the design from us. It's like the, we only see power resources that you can, they are like switches on and off. And if you turn it off, it, it doesn't mean that actually, uh, uh, the domain goes off because it may be more complicated. It's like we only see the interface. Hardware gets the last say. Hardware gets last say, yeah. So That's. No, no, it doesn't. Yeah, it, it, that's very true. Yeah, it doesn't. So yeah, maybe, so maybe if somebody were to hard code it, like, like maybe somebody wants to hard code it for a particular chip or something, and pass that in in some other mechanism like the device or something, then yeah, So now I think what what Kristen is asking for is that we have the information about power resources available from the existing CSFS, but it is kind of clogy to go to, to get it because you need to, it's very indirect. You, you need to get, uh, so for, you, you have a physical device and you, you want to see if that device is blocking something, right? So we need to find an ACPI object that is, or the ACPI object that is associated with that device. And in, the, in that ACPA object, you have links to power resources. And from there, you can get to those resources and see if they are on or, on or off. And that is not very direct, you, because you have, you have three or four steps to get that information, right? <laughs> yeah. So user space has to, but so in principle it, it can it can actually do it, uh, but but it's not very straightforward. But I think that maybe it's uh, as good good as good as it gets in this case. But uh, perhaps there's some information missing entirely from from CSFS, and I think there is in some cases, like we can't say at all what is what what's the real dependency, if, if there's any. And, uh, and it would be good, actually, to have a common way of kind of representing dependencies like that, regardless of whether they are ACPI or regulator or clocks or things like that, because the user space shouldn't really care about what the underlying platform architecture is. All right, so I guess we have five minutes left, so I, I think we, we've just probably beaten the horse as far as we could. Yeah. So there's one thing that the, about the last point, right? That we may need more settings. And that may, and what constraints do you, do you have in mind, actually? I mean, it, to be precise. Mm 
not very easy. But that's about CPU uh, frequency control or, or C states, or I mean idle yeah, states. Oh, I see, okay. So basically, like, what, what I'm saying, if there are folks wanting to move some, some of the existing governor control out of the kernel into the user space processes, which in theory is not a problem, but to do it in a non racy way, I think, is part of the challenge. Mm -hmm. So they want to control the CPU uh, the core settings like voltages and, and frequencies directly from user space or Oh, I see. Uh, and where non-racy means uh, non-racy uh, in terms of not crushing the kernel because of race conditions or, or non-racy because of uh, what happens to the device. I mean, uh, in, in, in terms of automaticity and so on. So, 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 yeah. Yeah. So we have, as far as power constraints are concerned, we have this uh, power capping sub subsystem proposal that, that was presented a, a few days ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Power, yeah, power, that's the kind of uh, an interface you're talking about, but that's for power limits. Yeah, basically, yes. Power and that, uh, yeah. Okay, so we've just used up our time. So thanks. Thanks a lot for coming and discussions. And see you later.